it is now my pleasure to welcome Dr. Stephen Mariano, the Naval War College Provost, to offer his closing remarks. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Jane, and uh, good afternoon, everyone, ambassadors, uh, admirals, uh, generals, uh, distinguished speakers, guests, Naval War College faculty, staff, and especially students. Thank you all once again for participating in this 10th annual Women and Peace and Security Symposium. A special shout out to those of you online, quite a few. Thank you. Uh, Admiral Garvin, uh, Dr. Yamin, Professor Stokes, thanks for uh, allowing me to wrap up the symposium today. I'd like to add my thanks also to Dr. Mary Rahm, who you, some of you got to see earlier, and Dr. Joan Johnson Fries for their leadership over the years. Dr. Yamin would not be concluding this 10th uh, annual symposium without their vision and leadership, so thank you. Um, I'd like to ask all of you to, to show some gratitude here, not only for Syra and Jane and the entire uh, women, uh, women and Peace and Security Committee uh, that organized uh, this wonderful event, but also all of the people that are behind the scenes, um, including some of the people in front of the scenes, as Christopher's taking a photo here, the events, the protocol teams, the public affairs office, the security crew, the band, if you didn't catch them yesterday, uh, the Naval War College Foundation, uh, the enlisted sailors that are literally the backbone uh, of the college. So would you please uh, join me in a round of applause for all of them. <clears throat> so I'd like to conclude with just three thoughts. First, briefly reflect, as Scott uh, Gartner mentioned, why we came. Second, remind us of the important role that professional military education institutions play in the what and how, uh, the exploration, the curation, the dissemination of ideas. And third, conclude with a little storytelling of my own about allyship, uh, which some of you may have heard portions before. So not only does the Universal Declaration of Human Rights state that there can be no discrimination on the basis of gender, but as the slide shows, it's the law. We've got UN Security Council Resolution 1325, and next year will be the 25th anniversary for the students. If you take nothing away from this, hopefully this is a number that sticks with you going forward that you can recall and have some uh, uh, now some meaning behind. So it's international law, but it's also domestic law. Uh, could I get the next slide, or should I click on my own? Thank you. Uh, so it's also a domestic law. Uh, so you heard about the Women, Peace, and Security Act here in the United States anyway. Um, and in that act, it recognizes the diverse roles that women play as agents of change. I really like that, and we heard a lot about that today. Could I get the next one, please? Um, we also know it's about government policy. So uh, you heard about DOD implementation objectives, about modeling behavior at home, and double the uh, WPS uh, tenants before bringing them abroad. And we even got a bonus round from uh, General Consul Coffey as it pertains to the Navy's ongoing uh, efforts to conduct some policy changes and better address the scourge of sexual assault and sexual harassment. So this is just a few of the statutory or compliance reminders of why we're here, not only to enact global aspirations laid down in international law and codified in US law, uh, and in U.S. government policy, but also because of the strategic aspects that came out in some of the discussions. We know evidence shows that diverse perspectives allow leaders to make better decisions. And as Dr. Gartner said, it's the right thing to do. Get the next slide, please. So these laws and policies tie directly to the Naval War College's mission set of education, research, and outreach. I'm proud that this 10th annual symposium, one of our largest outreach events of the year, is helping to build and strengthen the WPS network. As we just learned the word epistemic, the epistemic community is growing, and it's growing right here and right now in the auditorium, uh, in the reception that welcomed many of you, at lunch or dinner, in the margins, in the classroom, and of course, in the literature, which leads me to our WPS research agenda. We should soon be publishing a Naval War College Press uh, review uh, that has 18 papers in it from last year's uh, WPS symposium. And this year, we hope to do something similar. And that's right in line with Admiral Stephen B. Luce, our founder, uh, who uh, said that the Naval War College was to be a place of original research on all questions relating to war and to statesmanship connected with war and the prevention of war. We also look forward to having Stephanie McLennan present a writing award in her mother's honor this year to a student at the annual Juliet C. McLennan Prize for Women, Peace, and Security, which, is encur which encourages graduate-level research and publications. 
Can I get the next slide, please? This is the cover shot of a JFQ article written by a couple of Naval War College uh, faculty members with connections. I mentioned Joan Johnson Fries and Dr. Mary Beth Ulrich, many of you saw earlier, our current uh, strategy and department, uh, policy department chair. I first read this article on the sea of sameness 10 years ago, uh, and I recommend it uh, to you still. It changed my thinking, and I hope it does yours, along with the presentations you heard today. And more literature is added every day. Next slide, please. Uh, this one just came out uh, from some of our colleagues at the Army War College in the Marine Corps University. And uh, uh, perhaps in the future, as has been indicated here, we'll get some additional articles on the role of women, peace and security, and great power competition, or in deterrence, uh, or possibly uh, maybe the way that it happens differently at the tactical or operational or strategic levels of war. Natalia Cooper and Sterling Spencer, if you're out there. And when it comes to education, uh, uh, this line, our line of effort, the symposium is now going to be an inner part of our, our curriculum in a more prominent way. We're developing a new course, Perspectives on Modern War. And this seminar, this symposium, will be part of that uh, next year and in the years to come. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so now, uh, for the final point, I'd like to conclude with a little story, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a little storytelling of my own. And now some of you might know that I spent the first part of my career in the Army. Go Army. Go Navy. <laughs> uh, despite the challenges we still experience, I've had the very good fortune to be raised inside of an American military that has established policies and has performed missions abroad that included more meaningful participation of women than sometimes we give ourselves credit for. Uh, we know about the U.S. female engagement teams. Kathleen Pearl just introduced us to Afghanistan's female tactical pl platoons. But did you know, did you know, next slide please, that uh, despite the Integration Act in uh, 1946, we still had segregated uh, platoons, gender platoons, uh, in our lifetimes. And in this particular case, um, I had the good fortune of uh, being in an integrated platoon uh, whose number one uh, graduate was Carol Jones. Uh, next slide please. And in my first assignment as a lieutenant, my company officer was uh, Lieutenant Ann Forrester Muska, ably led by her, and she was one of the first women to graduate from the US Military Academy at West Point. Next slide, please. And I was also fortunate enough when I graduated from the Naval Postgraduate School to receive my diploma from uh, Rear Admiral uh, Marcia Evans, first female superintendent uh, out at the Naval Postgraduate School. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next slide. And in Afghanistan, I was serving there, uh, and I went to this uh, school opening. Uh, very tense situation there. Um, next slide, please. Um, where uh, men were in the middle and the women and the young girls were over on the side. Um, pretty tense situation, but when I entered the crowd with, next slide, please, uh, Jane Pitsy, Petty Officer Jane Pitsy from the British Navy, the mood lightened, <clears throat> the segregated crowd began to mingle, and the tensions reduced except maybe mine, uh, I look terrified. Next slide, please. Uh, when I served in Rome as the dean of the NATO Defense College, <clears throat> I was proud to call uh, Christine Wycross, Lieutenant General from the Canadian Armed Forces, my battle buddy. She was the first commandant of the NATO Defense College. Next slide. And of course, here last year, uh, many of you might have met a Rear Admiral, now Vice Admiral Shoshana Chatfield, uh, who was the first uh, president here at the Naval War College. I was proud to call her ma'am. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> that, I hope I, I hope I can do this. <laughs> That's my daughter. <clears throat> so uh, she is currently a captain promotable in the United States Army. That is her at the Royal Military Academy of Sandhurst, uh, where she was an exchange cadet. So after going to basic training and OCS, uh, she selected field artillery as her branch uh, because not every branch was open to her. Uh, so she couldn't go infantry. But she goes to Sandhurst, one of the few places where American uh, cadets, in this case, wear the uniform of another nation. And she joined 10 platoon, next slide, which was the girls' platoon, and that's what they were called, the girls' platoon, Segre segregated, not integrated. Um, that is an impressive but ordinary photo, um, but this photo, next slide please, shows an amazing, uh, in a blink of an eye, the unique characteristics of the role that women play. Uh, 
and I think to art and security, we should add fashion and security. <laughs> Same platoon, different uh, attire. Uh, next slide, please. So a little bit more my, my daughter. So um, not only in the schoolhouse, uh, but uh, she joined the 82nd Airborne Division, became a paratrooper, a jump master, uh, and jumped out of a perfectly good airplane into Gabon, West Africa. Next slide, please. When they landed on the drop zone, <clears throat> it turned out that the drop zone team didn't speak any English. And when her company commander looked around, um, said help, uh, she stepped up. Uh, not only did the drop zone team commander not speak English, but neither did the boat captain that was taking them off the drop zone to their next location. So her and her crew there were doing their best, Captain Morgan, uh, and got invited to the U.S. Embassy that evening to meet the U.S. Ambassador Cynthia Aquetta, not because Elena was a woman, but because she was confident. Uh, she had unique skills and used them. She not only uh, took her seat at the table, uh, she spoke up, and she did it the second language. <laughs> So modeling behavior for allies and partners, check. Next slide, please. Uh, when in Iraq for the Battle of Mosul, she was not allowed to do the job that she was trained to do because she was a woman. So she was a fire support officer in an infantry company uh, in, uh, in 82nd, and when she went to Iraq, couldn't do her job. Uh, but she ended up in the operations center, excuse me, and she got to brief General Milley, who was a Naval War College graduate, by the way. Uh, so again, great opportunities, but as this example shows, there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, so, uh, allyship is not just a man's issue. Uh, it's a leadership issue, but it's also a parental issue. Next slide, please. So you saw a version of this slide, um, and I would just say, Ambassador Chowdhury, my soul rests fairly well. Uh, knowing that as we mature and implement our inclusive policies and gender perspectives that my daughter will stand not only on the shoulders of these giants, but also on your, your shoulders. Uh, for those of you that are teaching and researching and discussing with women, peace, and security, um, we look forward to welcoming you all back to Newport uh, next year for the 11th Annual Symposium. Thanks again for all that you've done. Hopefully you've enjoyed the last two days, uh, fair winds and following seas as you return to your home port. Thank you very much.